Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Wow's Alive. We're here with a British uh, artist, a remarkable artist, and a sea swimmer. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I just stumbled across your artwork, and it was remarkable. But your artwork actually took a while to get started. Could you take us through how you, your roots in, in the Netherlands and your corporate jobs, and then suddenly how you became a wonderful artist? Sure. Um, so I was brought up uh, abroad in Holland um, and our house actually had a canal that ran through the front garden. So my background had been living by water and I've always loved it. Um, I did art at school, um, so I've always had a background in painting um, and a background in, in water. But from, a, from an art perspective, when I got to the age of 18 and I had to choose which career I wanted to do, I was far too insecure to, to follow my passion. Um, so I ended up doing a different degree and I stopped painting for a good 20 years um, and ended up going into a corporate job. Uh, and I worked in an office and felt very unfulfilled uh, for a good 20 years um, and I, I got to the stage where I realized that you know I, I couldn't do any other kind of job in the office world I'd done everything already I kind of reached an end point um, and I really missed my creative roots so I bought some soft pastels and that was it overnight I rediscovered my passion for painting uh, and <laughs> I started painting quite obsessively uh, around my job um, so I was doing 30 hours in work and I ended up doing uh, 30 hours of painting um, oh. to fit it. Yeah, it was it was intense, um, but it was so addictive for me. I, I had to, you know, so I was getting up at sort of four or five in the morning uh, to paint for a couple of hours and then go into work and do that and then come home and paint after I put my girls to bed. Um, and uh, it, it got too much. Um, and I was at the point where my art career was starting to take off and I was selling stuff well. Um, and I'd won the award uh, at the Pastel Society exhibition. And I thought, you know what, if I'm gonna do this, this is the moment I think where I have to just make that leap of faith. Um, wow. So I did, so I left my job um, and became a full-time artist. Wow, so, so you're 18 years old, you know, yeah. a teenager and, and you're a little insecure. You dive into your university studies at, and then you, 20 year career, IT, you know, marketing, um, finance, et cetera. What was that trigger that, that finally said, I gotta, I gotta get, get to work? Um, what, to move over back to the to, art to, world? To move, to move to artistry. Um, so I, I had quite bad depression um, for a long time. I think that was stemmed from unfulfilled um, career uh, in, in a job I didn't enjoy um, and you know I, I wasn't doing very well at it um, and it, it just put me in a very bad place um, and I think that was probably the trigger and actually I ended up stumbling upon some artwork by uh, another artist who used soft pastel and she's called Zara Foreman uh -huh. she does these incredible hyper-realistic um, icebergs absolutely phenomenal and <laughs> And I, I just thought, oh, I want, I want that. I need that in my life. I need to have that connection with painting, um, but also to be able to paint something that I love, that I don't feel I have a full connection with, and that, that's the water. Um, so we, when we were younger, my husband and I used to surf regularly. Um, you know, we used to sneak away at weekends. Um, we go surfing on an evening. Um, but when we had kids, you know, your priorities change. Um, so I would say for a good eight years, we, we hadn't really surfed very much and I was starting to miss that connection to the sea. Um, so it, it felt right for me, not just to paint, but to paint something that I was missing, you know, and that connection to nature and something so, you know, huge and elemental like the sea, uh, it was beautiful to paint it. Um, so that's kind of how that all merged together. Got it. I, before I jump into your, your painting and how you, you work with light and movement, et cetera, I didn't know you were a surfer. And I think <laughs> surfers view the ocean and the seashore much differently than a, than a sea swimmer. Yes, you, well, because you, you're on a, a surfboard, so you're, you're higher up. Um, and I think, and then you'll probably see it in my painting as well. So I, I actually came to open water swimming only last year. Um, and 
if you look at the paintings that I did prior to that, a lot of them were more about movement of water and the power and the rage, you know, like Hear Me Roar or Twilight Wave, any of those are all about the wave. Um, and it was only really when I came to open water swimming and that that first time that I found open water swimming um, was when we were on holiday in Cape Verde and um, I'd had, you know, months of, of really low patch with my depression. Um, and I was photographing the sunset from the side of the shore. It's a very different angle. And I thought, you know what, what am I doing? I need to get into the water. This is so beautiful. <laughs> and it was one of those evenings where the sun actually sets directly into the sea, you know, and it's, it was so magical. And I just thought, I, so I put the camera aside and I, I got into the water and it was just, my head was here, just above the water. And I was surrounded by like liquid gold and it was so moving. And that was it. I, I, I just I found open water swimming. And that's what inspired um, the two paintings, Haven and Sanctuary. Um, and I wanted in that painting to capture what a swimmer's perspective is. So, you know, we're, we're so lucky because we get to see the water from just above the surface. And it's a very unique perspective um, and it's very intimate. You know, you you see the surface tension right before you. Um, and I. I the reference photos that I took. So I take all my own reference photos. To me, that's that's absolutely critical okay. because I want to capture what I'm seeing in the lens, but then what I'm feeling at the time, I can then pour that into the painting um, afterwards. So I deliberately took a, um, a narrow focus picture. So the background and the foreground is very out of focus because I wanted to give that feeling of almost like immediacy and, and intimacy. And it's a very small private world as you slip into that water and it's just you and the sea. And that's that's what I try to reflect in those two paintings. Wow. I can't even draw a circle well. <laughs> I can't draw a circle. Circles are really hard. <laughs> so how does an artist like you, so you, you get inspired by mother nature, you're in the sea yeah. up to here, you take a photograph, like what is, do you, do you sketch it out? Do you, do you select colors ahead of time or you just sort of go at, go for it? Um, so it's a lot, it's quite a long drawn out process. So a lot of people think the painting is just me stood by the paper and that's it. But actually for me, it's, it's about capturing that moment. And I, I take it literally hundreds, if not thousands of reference photos because water is ever moving and ever changing. Um, and you can get pictures minutes apart that are completely different to each other. So that's the first part. The next part is then going through all of those photos and I will take, you know, three or four, if not longer days to go through them and just keep looking at them and trying to find the ones that feel right, you know, that really capture my eye. Um, and I do tend to then work probably from at least three or four reference photos because they'll have elements that I want to take maybe the sky in one and the foreground in another. Um, and once I've got to that stage, you have to work out how big you're going to make this. You know, you go, I tend to work big. You know, one of the things I like to do is make it feel like it's a window that you're stood in front of. And the bigger it is, I think the more the viewer is drawn into that world. And that's a big part for me. I, I, want, I want you to feel like you're there in the sea with me. Yeah. Um, and then it's a case of sketching it out and choosing your palette. Um, and I tend to over choose, so I end up with about 24 different colored pastels. Um, but that's it. Once I've got to that stage and I've narrowed down my palette and I've got it sketched out, that's me then. Then I can just get myself into the zone and start painting it. Um, and when you get into the zone, is that hours on end, days on end, weeks on end? What, what is the, the time frame that you work on? Yeah, so uh, they take a long time. I mean, they're very detailed and they're large as well. Um, and I layer up the colors. So uh, pastels can behave similar to oil paints. Um, so you can layer up and the more you layer up, the richer and denser the, the color depth becomes. Um, and I like that. I think that that's, it creates a richness to it. Um, so really, I mean, Haven and Sanctuary probably were a hundred hours each. Um, so, I mean, I, I had to work around my, my girls, so they go to school. Yeah. So my day is short, so I only get about six hours before I then have to go and pick them up again. Um, but six hours is intense. You know, I stand up to paint because they're so large. I have the, the paper pinned to my wall. And to be honest, after six hours, I'm exhausted and it is physically tiring. Mentally, it's exhausting as well. 
Um, but I do tend to work on that then five days a week until it's finished. And I, I, that's it. When I'm in a zone and I'm on a painting, that, that's the only one I can work on. I know other artists who can work on five or six pieces. Okay. But to me, each one is its own personality. And it's a relationship that evolves um, as the painting progresses. And that demands my full attention, really. Yeah. It, as an as a open water swimmer, I do feel that personality and that, that relationship between the sky and the light and the waves and the texture yeah. of the sea. Um, can you explain how you, you, you view light or color and texture? I mean, it, to me, it's complex, but perhaps you can explain it much better than me. From a from a painting perspective? Yes, yes. How you, I mean, you've got these you've got these pastels on, at your hand, and all of a sudden you start <laughs> putting them to paper, and it comes alive. And I, I I observe it. I look at it. It's beautiful. But I go, how in the world do you do that? It's sort of like me thinking, um, how does in the world does Sarah Thomas do four ways across the English Channel? I have no concept. Uh, yes. of <laughs> um. For me, it's it's breaking down the the, the two dimensional photograph oh, and trying okay. to understand if the sky is this color, is it just this color, or is it actually made up of different colors that create that sense of depth? So an orange sky at sunset would be deeper hues of of, of orange with sort of lighter yellows that I would layer on top to create that feeling of of sky. Um, I mean, the, the, the water is incredibly difficult to do because yeah. you're recreating something that's both reflective and translucent and moves at the same time. You know, it's, it, it's mind boggling. Um, so it's just a case of building it up in sections um, and trying not to get overwhelmed by the whole piece, which yeah. I think a lot of people could get overwhelmed by. Um, and I think it's just always going back to not seeing it just as water, but to see it as an image, as a two-dimensional picture, and just working out what those colours are, are doing, and also how they work together. You know, every colour's got a relationship with the colour next to it, and if you get those colours wrong, it won't look like a wave anymore. It'll look yeah. too garish, and, and the eye won't be convinced that it's looking at water. Um, so, it, yeah, it is, <laughs> it is complex. Yeah, and then are, are there... When you think about when you take this photograph and you, and you have these reference photographs, are you is it are you searching for something or are you sort of stumbling across something and then trying to capture that? A bit of both. Okay. Um, but I would say most of my paintings are driven by a feeling at that time when the photos oh. were taken okay. and then hoping that I've captured that in a good enough reference photo and then hunting, hunting down that reference photo to capture that feeling that I had and I've had many a failed photo shoot where I've wanted to capture a certain feeling that I had at the time and I just can't have I haven't got the skills or, or the moment wasn't right on the camera um, but when those two elements combine together and you get the right photo and it captures what you were looking for it's priceless because you know I've got everything there at my fingertips then to create the painting that I need to. Got it, got it. And you know, from, from your painting career, you're still young. I mean, you're, you're only five <laughs> years into it, correct? Yeah, yeah, pretty new, yeah. Yeah, have you seen your, your um, abilities evolve over time or uh, are, you, are you exploring deeper kind of images and feelings that you're trying to portray? Yes, so absolutely. So if I look back at, my first two or three paintings I think my skill set technically has absolutely increased uh, but I think more importantly my confidence has increased in my own ability um, and I think a lot of it is self-belief you know if you believe you can create that painting that's half the battle you know, if you go into a painting thinking I, I haven't got what it takes you, you've failed at the first hurdle um, and and having got to this stage five years on I feel now that I can tackle reference photos that, you know, four years ago, I wouldn't have touched with a barge pole because I would have considered them technically well beyond my ability. Um, and it's allowed me as well to start exploring different concepts. So I'm still working with water, 
but I'm trying to go um, to slightly more, what would be the word? Um, I want the paintings to have a slight, slightly bigger narrative. Um, so the last painting that I did uh, was a swimmer, but I actually turned the reference photo by 90 degrees. So it looked like she was actually on her side and her reflection in the water looked like her mirror image. Um, mm. And that became um, through the looking glass so inspired by Alice in Wonderland. Um, and that was great fun because it allowed me to play a lot more with the imaginative side. Um, and then the one that I'm working on at the minute um, is technically hideous. <laughs> it's really <laughs> difficult. Um, so I'm actually creating a painting that's got reflections of trees. Um, so I, I took a walk through, I live by some beautiful woods um, and there's a pond there. And of course in the pond, well, you've got all the trees reflected um, and I threw a stone in to get the ripples. Um. So I'm having to recreate leaves and branches and trees and ripples all reflecting on the surface of water, which is mind bogglingly difficult. <laughs> it's really hard, but it's great fun because it's a challenge and I, I, I like that, it's fun. Yeah. And you do you paint at home or do you go into a studio? No, I, uh, I've decided to keep my studio here. So I've got a room at the front of the house. Uh, it's got nice big windows, north facing, the light is perfect in it and it's big enough for what I need. And it means that um, my time is better spent at home because once the girls are picked up uh, and they're at home, if they're busy and they don't need me, I can sneak away and do another couple of hours. If I had a studio elsewhere, yeah. you know, you've got the commute time, you've got the fee to renting the place. And I, one day I'd love that. Um, but at the minute, no, it's, it's yeah. in my home. So, so you're with your girls and your husband and, and do they peek in and say, oh, mom, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's no privacy in this house. <laughs> they come in all the time um but it's fine you know and they take great interest in in what I'm doing and what I'm working on and it's nice because you know we can have family conversations about what I'm working on next and what do they think and then it's great to have that support where I can sound ideas off them um yeah. and they can be a part of that process as well so they get the highs and they get the lows <laughs> you know if I'm in a difficult patch they they get all the moaning and there's a lot of that <laughs> yeah is there is there some um ideal image that you want to create just in the back of your mind or, or is you just come across it at some point if there is i haven't found it okay. um, i worry that if there was the perfect image and i painted it where would i go to after that uh, okay. um, so i think it's more about constant evolving and understanding of my skills and where i can take them um, and not knowing where that leads to is exciting because it's, you know, it's a path where I don't know the end point where that is or what yeah. that looks like. Yeah. What's well, amazing. I mean, you, you know, a corporate soldier, if you will, you know, for <laughs> 20 years, you're finally unleashed. And within a short five year period, you're still evolving and you still have all these awards and accolades. It, it's, it's very remarkable. Thank you. <laughs> it's yeah. been quite a journey, actually. Yeah, and and explain to the our audience what where they can see your your uh, artwork, um, some of the awards that you've received. Um, so there's only one award, although thank you for saying there's more. I wish there were more. Um, so I won the Annie Longley Prize um, at the annual Pastel Society Exhibition. So the exhibition was in London, and it was ah oh, the first year of painting. I was really new to it, um, and I got um two pieces selected into the exhibition which is really good um most people you know hardly anyone gets selected or, or if you do get selected you get one piece in um and that was astonishing on its own right and then I remember I was getting a phone call to tell me that I'd actually won an award uh for one of my paintings burst into flame which was a seascape and um I was mind-blowing and also that was the I think the turning point when I realized actually, you know, this was something that other people took seriously. Yeah. Um, and, and it was something that I, I could carry forward and make a career of. Um, but um, I mean, I've, I've had, <laughs> I had one of my paintings appear on the BBC, which is, you know, a uh, massive right. TV channel here. Um, that, was, that was good fun. So that appeared on a, a makeover program 
Okay. Um, and they used it, uh, they wanted to use a seascape image uh, to upholster furniture. Um, and they heard about my artwork and they used one of the paintings with ripples on it. Um, and it was very strange to see my painting appear on fabric and then on, on a chair, <laughs> but it was fun. It was great. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And your website? Oh, the words. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Got carried away then. Um, yeah. So um, all my work is on my website um, and uh, that's that's where I sell paintings and, and prints of, of the paintings as well um because yeah. i understand you know not everyone can afford an original painting um but they would still like to own artwork as well yeah. um and, and that is www.michellelucking.com okay. <laughs> okay great great and do you have any uh, upcoming exhibitions or oh. or Yes, oh. but uh, they're, they're, so last year, well, sorry, we're still in this year. So 2020, yeah. unfortunately, has been a write-off. Oh. Um, so I was meant to exhibit uh, at a few places. They've all been cancelled, unfortunately, oh. um, but understandably. So my next one uh, is going to be Surrey Art Fair in March. Okay. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> hopefully by March we're sort of out of this uh, yes. COVID uh, but oh, it's been lovely talking to you and, and it, you know, continue the great work. And uh, I know we have uh, an open water swimming community, a lot of fans of your, your creativity. That's great. Thank you so much. It's been really lovely talking to you. Thank you.